Hello Internet, in this video we're going to be looking at context menus and context menu items. Uh, these are helpful scripts that you can use in your Unity project in order to more easily access certain functions inside of your mono behaviors. Um, previously, we made this scene loader uh, and Jason's story pointed out that there were some uh, other things. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with him, he has done some projects with infallible code over on another YouTube channel. I will link that in the description. Um, and has also just uh, generally been a pretty awesome advisor on Unity stuff. And so he recommended instead of doing a Boolean and kind of doing a flag to load this, uh, using these context menus as a way to do that. So that's what we're going to look at today. Um, there are two different things you can use for this. There is context menus and context menu items. They work differently, but they both kind of do similar things. Uh, context menu is an annotation that you would apply to a function. And context menu item is one that you would apply to a property. Um, so in this case, the point of this is we are going to remove our load level Boolean here. Um, the reason we want to get rid of that is because it's kind of clunky to use. Basically, the way this function works is I run my project. Let's let's restart this uh, and click load level. This is going to set that flag to true. And then in the next update, we're effectively pulling that uh, Boolean value. And if it's true, then we're going to execute our load level logic. The problem with this is it clutters up our update method and it's error prone. If for whatever reason we forget to unset this, let's say we throw an error, we have an exception. If we do not catch that exception and set the Boolean back to false, we are going to have an infinite loop of trying to do whatever action we set in this Boolean. By adding these menus for debugging things, you avoid that, that trap. Um, so that's sort of what we're looking at. This is what the current behavior is. If I click this, we get the, uh, our thing to load and we'll get a console log that says we loaded the level. The code for that looks like this. If you've watched the scene loading video, this should be familiar. This is the exact same code. I shouldn't have changed it. I might have commented a few things. Um, what we want to do is just drop everything out of this update. So that should just all go away. Um, and we should be able to drop our load level. So that should go away as well. Since we're getting rid of that, let's just start deleting things. Uh, the good thing, this is going to cause a whole bunch of errors. I said there were two ways to do this. Uh, there is a context menu and a context menu item. So context menu is going to apply to a method or a function. Uh, in this case, it would apply to the update because that's the next thing. Um, the other one you would apply to say level name and say context menu item. This is more complicated. Um, what this is actually uh, doing is assigning a function to this item. So you would right click the item in your thing. We're going to do both, but you would right click this uh, item and use that as a way to kind of reference a function from there. Um, so in this case, we're going to add a context menu item that's going to say uh, load level. And that's going to invoke some uh, do load level, or let's say editor load level. I, again, this is kind of clunky in, in how we're doing this, uh, and we're going to actually iterate on this a little bit as we move forward, um, but this should work for us for now. So we need a editor load level function. That second string, this function string, needs to match the name of whatever function it is. Um, this using strings, I do not recommend. This is how Unity would do it in their documentation. Uh, I recommend not doing that and using the name of function. I will show you how to do that. Um, but the problem with doing strings is if we try to refactor this, uh, it's not going to work. We're, we're going to miss that string. Uh, so void editor load level. This is our new function. Uh, you cannot have values be passed into this. That, that doesn't work. It will, it will throw an exception because you need to match the signature. Uh, and there is no way to pass parameters that I've found into this. It can't infer this and use that as like the first parameter or anything like that. That, that, is, that just isn't a thing. Um, so that's why I'm calling this the editor load level, because typically I'm assuming if we want to load a level, we actually are going to want to pass in some, some name of something. Uh, so that is how this is going to work. What we're going to do is call out to our start coroutine like that. And we should be good. I'm going to just remove that extra scene load. And there we go. So this is our coroutine to do to do the level load. 
Uh, anything that you want to call in this, you can debug and log some functions or do whatever. Any function will work. Um, basically, we're just going to execute this function whenever that menu item is clicked. So this is going to trigger our level load. So we should be able to remove our update. Uh, so that is now gone. And so we have a uh, editor load level. The other option for ways to invoke this is with a context menu. Um, so if you do context menu, I believe you can give it a name like this. Uh, and I priority, I believe that's used for ordering in the list. Um, but uh, the item name is just going to be what the thing actually appears as. That's the same as the top thing, the load level. Um, so we're just going to call it the same thing. Um, but we'll call this our context menu. Uh, this will let us kind of figure out which one is which. Um, and you probably don't need both of these. There's probably some way that you prefer to work with this. And this is only going to be useful in your editor. Um, so however you, you work best, pick one. Um, if you need both, then go for it. Um, I had mentioned using a something other than a function or using something other than a string here. C Sharp provides something called the name of operator that will get you the name of a class or a function or a property or anything like that. It will turn that uh, C Sharp object or reference into a, a named representation of itself in, in a string. And so you can use that instead. The advantage is if I go here and right click and refactor and do a rename on this editor load level, and we'll just say editor load level two, uh, I could be wrong here. ReSharper, I'm using ReSharper here, may catch this, uh, but I don't think it will. I did. Okay. Well, <laughs> ignore this example because this didn't work. Uh, but most code editors are not going to catch this. This is not something that most things are going to look for. Um, so if you do, are using Visual Studio Code or something like that, there's a very good chance that you're going to overlook that. So if we rename this using one of those functions, this is not going to get found. Uh, especially if they end up being in different things. Uh, that's usually not a, a shouldn't happen in this circumstance, um, but it can. So this is sort of how all this ends up looking. We have two things that can invoke this editor load level. Both of them should cause it to load the level. Uh, so let's do that. <laughs> um, whoa. Yeah, there we go. We, we broke it. We loaded the level like a thousand times. <laughs> Oops. Um, all right, let's start this. And we should be able to see two things. So the first one you access by right clicking on level name. So this is the property that we attached that context menu item to. It will only appear on the name of it. So if I right click over here, you'll just see cut, copy and paste. Um, but if you click the name, load level is that context menu item. Then in the top right, there is this little three dot thing. That is going to have our load level context menu. So this is the context menu for your mono behavior. The other one is specific to that property. I believe you can add multiple of the context menu items. Um, so if we wanted to, we could come in here and do load level two. Uh, I'm going to call the same function uh, just because I can. But we should be able to do this. Um, Unity will order these in some way that it thinks makes sense. Uh, you can change these by some format that I don't understand uh, or haven't looked up rather. Um, and that's that's that pretty much. Uh, so you can customize this and use this to expose functions in your class to your editor so that they're easier to use. If you have something that's like regenerate map or something, you can you can do that. For us, it's just we need a way to debug loading levels. This will do it because we don't actually have a UI in our game yet. We can't actually interact with our game. So we're adding them this way so we can still interact with things without having to do that. Um, we're probably going to use these a lot more, actually. Um, but this is how this works. If we click this, we execute our code and load our level. So now we have that sphere from scene B on top because we said load scene B. Uh, if I change this to scene A and do this again, now we have two cameras, two scenes, and everything is mad at me because I, I added two cameras. Um, but it works. Um, so th this is this is basically how all this works. I had mentioned using name of. When you're doing that, uh, you just need to edit your code like this. So do name of, and then in brackets this. 
Uh, so you can provide the name of a class or something else, and this will convert it to a string for you uh, and keep the object reference as, as an object reference. So you can use it that way. Um, this shouldn't be any different, and I would recommend this anytime you need a string reference to a class name or a function name or some other syntax, syntax object. I would recommend using name of just because it's going to be caught by uh, refactorings and it just provides nicer things. Um, if anything gets renamed, you're going to get into syntax error because this no longer works. Strings are still strings. So if you're relying on a string, uh, it's not going to work. The, the advantage here is if we do say, rename this to test. Now this is a syntax error. This no longer compiles because we mistyped this. If this was a string, everything is going to be fine. It's going to compile. You might not even notice that it doesn't work because you don't use that very often, but your code is broken. Um, so this can be a safety net to kind of catch those things. But that is pretty much everything to do here. Uh, it should work the same way, regardless of whether you use the context menu item here or the context menu in this case. So those are, I guess, two things that can kind of help improve your inspectors and make them a little bit more useful for you if you're trying to debug things. Uh, so thanks so much for the suggestion, Jason. And uh, go check out some of the stuff that he has shared uh, because he's, he's pretty insightful on all sorts of different Unity things. Um, but that's that's it for now. So I guess until next video, I will see you then. Yeah, that was a good outro. <laughs> All right. See you, Internet.